everyone, and welcome to the Sedona International Film Festival. This is our 25th anniversary. We are so excited to be here. I'm Carol Kahn, and we're coming to you live from the Sedona Rouge Hotel, who is one of our sponsors, along with Black Magic Design and Digitech. So we'd like to thank our sponsors for participating. And joining me now is David Christopher with The Seed. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. This is really exciting. So you had mentioned that you had been in here before. A film of yours has been here before. Correct? Yes, 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 absolutely. It's a, First of all, let me say thank you to everybody at the Sedona International Film Festival. As a filmmaker, uh, I have been taken care of since the day one when I got a phone call from your executive director, personal phone call. Uh, everybody to Jeremy, who has helped me with the technical aspects of getting the film here, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And then Liz, which kind of helped me with all the accommodations. So everybody's been fantastic. So thank you all to uh, the film festival here. You guys do an incredible job. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And yeah. it's really nice to have you too. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about your film because um, it's called The Seed. And is it based on a true story? Uh, inspired by actual events. So uh, we did quite a bit of research and uh, around the country uh, speaking with farmers that have had uh, patent infringement lawsuits against Monsanto. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a very real thing um, that happens over 8,000 times in our country alone. Um, not so much anymore because uh, Monsanto has pretty much taken over, especially in terms of corn. So if you don't know, 90% of the corn crop now is all completely GMO. So no one has really addressed this issue in a narrative, right? Lots of documentaries about it, but nobody's done anything in, in narrative storytelling. And uh, just a little bit of history, you know, I'm a single dad and my daughter you know, wanted corn chips and so I would feed her corn chips. And then all of a sudden I saw a, a documentary on GMOs. I'm like, what? What's going on? I'm feeding my child this and I don't have a choice. And I just got really angry about that. And I was like, well, what can I do with this anger? Well, what, what do you do, David? You're a storyteller. Well, let's tell a story, you know? So uh, I, I did a lot of research and I came up with this story outline uh, and I took it to my writing partner, uh, who's our writer and director, Charlie Weedman. Uh, and he crafted just a beautiful, beautiful story. Um, and we call that V5, that's version five of the script. So we have a fully a feature length script uh, that's ready to go. And it's gorgeous, epic story and the, 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 about this farm family and all the trials that they go through and then it brings up the issue of GMOs and what is a GMO and what happens with this and all the things that go on. Uh, but it's really a story about uh, faith and family and perseverance and hard times and, and the simplicity and beauty of life and that somehow we have forgotten that in our quest for more. Like we're trying to get more, more, more and it's nothing seems to satisfy us. But there's something that happens on the farm in that stillness that just is like so satisfying to your soul. And so that really gets to come out in the feature length film. So uh, in the feature film, um, you know, once we were done, you know, we had so many people excited about it. I mean, the film has been endorsed by 30 major organizations around the world, uh, Farm Aid, Organic Consumer Association, iFoam out of Europe. I mean, just so many people saw the value of a narrative story with this subject matter to reach mainstream consciousness, you know, to, to get this issue out there. Because a lot of folks will watch, a documentary is a different experience, right? And I love docs, but it's more of an intellectual experience, right? Narrative stories kind of hit you viscerally. And people at home who may be watching either in a theater or at home can relax and get into the characters and follow them and, oh, by the way, this is going on? Like, what? I had no idea. So lots of excitement about the film, about the feature film, and we took it to LA and, you know, my God, some of the phones and the conversations, the phones ringing and everything going on, it was so exciting. We had so many people very interested in it. Kyle Chandler was probably the first. Um, you know, we were looking at him to play the lead role. Um, I was gonna take a secondary role in it. Uh, it's my film, so I wanted to, you know, obviously have a part in it. Uh, and that didn't work out with Kyle. And then we had Kevin Sorbo involved for a while. We had Willie Nelson, obviously, you know, they love it. You know, he's like, let's make a movie, you know? And <laughs> his manager's like, well, once you get funding in place, then we'll talk. Um, so it was really a, a, a meeting with Kevin Costner and his uh, pr producers uh, that came to Austin. Um, Kevin loved the script. Uh, he wanted to play the lead role. And uh, we had a meeting with them and we sat down and they said, look, you guys, 
beautiful script. You know, Kevin loves it. He's really interested in doing this, but you know, we're going to have to turn this into a 30 or $40 million film. And Charlie, who's our writer, he was with me because they said, look, you great job, but we're going to have to do a rewrite on the script and you're going to get credit, but it'll be at the end. And, you know, certainly Charlie, you're a great director, but you're not going to be able to direct Kevin Costner in a $40 million film. So we're going to get another director. And David, I know this is your baby and you've worked on this for forever and you want to be in it. And I can't guarantee that you're going to have a part in the film. And you guys can be producers in name only, but you'll get a seat at the table for the next one. <laughs> and you know what, man? I left that meeting and I went outside and had a cigarette. It's like, oh my God. And I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I had worked so hard to uh, bring this story to life and I wanted to tell it in a truthful, honest way. Um, and I wanted an opportunity for myself, uh, for uh, my writing partner and director and, and, and my other partner who's, who, who's the DP of the film. And I just couldn't do it. And as soon as I said no, it was like life just, there's this vacuum and every door closed, right? And all of a sudden all is positivity, everything's, and I was just out of time, out of money, I invested everything. So I had to go back to work, earn some money. The project got moved on the back burner. And it sat there for about a year and a half with nothing really going on. And I just couldn't, it, it burns inside of me that I have to make this. So um, we ended up, I said, well, let's go back. Uh, we have some friends who did really well with their short films based on their features. So I said, let's go back. Let's show everybody what we can do as filmmakers. Um, so we went back, we crowdfunded, we raised some money. I put in the rest of the money. We produced a short film. Uh, that is based on the feature. Um, it's a little bit different than the feature because you only have so much time. You can't explore all of these themes. You really have to pick one and go with it. But I think we've done a really good job. And, and the goal is to really uh, show everybody the world what we can do with our work and, and then uh, get the investment to, to make the feature. So the feature film is ready to go. The city of Hutto, Texas is like, you know, come make it, their arms are open. Um, and this uh, is our very first film festival to have our film shown at. So world premiere was uh, yesterday uh, late afternoon, and I don't think it could have gone any better. I was really blown away. Awesome. You know, one thing I wanted to talk to you, because I did see the, the short, and, um, you know, the movie to me is about integrity because, you know, you have the characters talking and their friends and neighbors for many years and their families connected. And, you know, there was a dialogue that went um, back and forth. And so not only is it a uh, film about integrity with <clears throat> friends, it's also about integrity about what's actually happening to us, you know, with our food and everything that we almost can't even control. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I speak to this a little bit, you know, in, in our world today with the moral compass kind of skewed, right? We need stories with uh, people um, who are standing up for what they believe in and, and, and honesty and integrity and truth, right? It may not be convenient. It may not be easy, but you have to stand up and you have to say, no, this is not right and I'm not going to do it. Now the other aspect too with the Me Too movement that's out there and, and God bless all the women in the world, I wouldn't be where I'm at with all the women in my world. Um, but I think there's, there's like men um, need to step up, right? In terms of uh, operating from a place of integrity um, and, and bringing some femininity into, uh, into their lives and into, into what they do. But we need characters in films that are those kind of role models. And that's what I really love about our story is we've got a really strong male character who stands up and is doing the right thing. He's protecting his family. He's not going to back down from, uh, you know, this giant, you know, uh, uh, a seed company that's trying to push him around. And, and I just love that. And I think we need more examples of that so that people can actually do that in their own lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree with that. And I was talking to um, someone else during the film festival as well. And, you know, gone are the days, you know, that I felt anyway of like the Norma Rays and all the people who actually stood up for that because, you know, when business gets involved, it seems like it's, you know, you hit a brick wall and trying to get anything accomplished because you're only going to be pushed down. 
So by doing a narrative, it, it you know brings out the story, just like you said, in another way that I think is really important to communicate to the public so people can see what really truly is happening. I love that you said Norma Ray because that was a film, I just love that film, and, and Places in the Heart mm -hmm. is another one. Um, that that I think it, you know if I had to try to describe what our feature film is, I would probably describe it somewhere between a Norma Ray and, and a Places in the Heart with a, a GMO issue. I mean the characters, um, you know, you just fall in love with, you know, and it's going to have an incredible soundtrack, you know, with it, you know, and it's a slice of Americana, right? The the farmers may be our last vestige of true Americana, right? And and I think they're heroes. And we need to show, you know, how important they are. Uh, but maybe, you know, our film can be that clarion uh, that brings this issue to light through this narrative storytelling. And then, oh, by the way, I'm going to have this amazing dramatic experience, you know, in the theater while, while I watch this. So that's the, the, the goal. Uh, you know, our world premiere was yesterday. I was blown away. It couldn't have gone any better. The response from the audience was amazing. Um, my first time ever showing the film publicly. I've only done one screening at the Austin Film Society in Austin, Texas with friends and family and you know they're friends and family so what you know they're not going to get some real critique you know and I was as a filmmaker you know when you're when you're making your film you kind of lose all objectivity you know I mean I've seen it like a million times I don't know is this good anymore I can't even tell so I need we need as filmmakers we need some reflection right so being able to show it and then getting response uh, it, it's just like the most fulfilling thing. It's like, oh God, yes, we are on the right track. Okay, we are doing it right. <laughs> oh, well, that's awesome. I'm so glad you're here. And how can people find out about your film? Um, so they can go, uh, yeah, we're on all social media, but the-seed-movie.com is our website. Um, and then we're also on Facebook, so facebook.com, theseedatx. And then we're on Twitter as well. So yeah, just look for us, you'll find us for sure. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us at the Film Festival and showing it for the world premiere of your, of your film. So thank you very much. I want to say just one other thing. I know Black Magic is one of your sponsors. Yes. Uh, so I wanted to give a shout out to Black Magic because we shot this entire project on a Black Magic 4K broadcast camera. And we cut and, uh, and colorized in uh, Da Vinci. Um, so thank you all to Black Magic because you guys were uh, instrumental in what we were doing. Uh, so I just wanted to give a shout out because I know those guys are your sponsors. Oh, awesome. Thank you for saying that. I yeah. know I love them. I told them that they have to make us look good. <laughs> That's a priority. Yeah. <laughs> so David, thank you so much. You're it's welcome. such a pleasure. And we will be back with more from the Sedona International Film Festival after this.